it was a whole weird thing. Here I, you know, here I was one minute in in uh, New York, scoring dope in Alphabet City, and it, and here I am in sunny LA, uh, in the Valley at Nigel's house, thinking I could walk to Hollywood. I had no idea, you know. Yeah, Checkered Past uh, was a band that um, kind of come about uh, on a fluke. Uh, I was in New York after, just after Professionals. I didn't go back to England when we, we finished a tour in, in, in New York. And I said, I'll see you later, guys. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to England. And, uh, you know, I stayed out there, hooked up with various people, Couch hopping, shooting dope in Alphabet City was a mess. I had no money, sold me passport. Oh man, not not the best of times. And uh, I ran into uh, Michael Debars. I don't even know how it came about. I remember doing we were going to do his showcase at Peppermint Lounge. That was the place we played in early eighties, and. Uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. There was a bit of cash there. I heard cash. I'm like, I'm in. So we knocked up a bunch of covers and it got a good reception. It was me, Michael DeBars, Tony Sales, Nigel Harrison from Blondie, Clem Burke from Blondie. And uh, after the show, everyone was like, yeah, that was great. Let's do it again. But everyone was kind of based in LA, you know, and I said, okay, yeah, that's great, but uh, I'm kind of living here on people's couches. And they goes, come on, let's go out there. And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a junkie too. And um, when we, when we, when we, when I decided to go, I got clean into some weird methadone place. I wasn't sober. I got off junk, you know. It was just, I, I, you know, I, I never planned anything back then. I just kind of went with whatever was sounded like a good idea at the time. So we wrote a bunch of songs and got a record deal with EMI, but we got totally got the wrong guy to produce the record. He didn't get us. He didn't. He had no clue of what we were about. His name was Michael Jackson. He was trying to turn us into something that we wasn't. We was a raw loud rock and roll band and he tried to turn us into some like amp from rock band. It was a disaster. And then we started, you know, I lived with Michael and Pamela for a while. I wasn't doing dope at the time, but I could see myself going down that road because I wasn't completely sober. I was still drinking and doing blow and whatever else I was getting my hands on. And uh, just one day I just decided to start doing dope again. And they went out of town one day and I had no money, and I sold some of Pam's uh, records, Beatles records, I think they were Beatles records, and some of Michael's jackets when they went out of town. And then, of course, when they came back, I, was, I had to find somewhere else to stay. He wasn't happy, understandably. And, and then it kind of fell apart, you know, due to me again, going back on dope again, you know? Not, not my finest hour, you know, but... When you're a junkie, man, it's hard to uh, be honourable or do the right thing. You get desperate. I got desperate, you know, and looked for the easier option to keep that to keep that ball rolling. <laughs> 